Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. I uh, want to discuss the fact that we're uh, just about a week away from a new Joe Biden administration. Of course, they have some lofty goals for what they're looking to accomplish. And among the top of those goals uh, it sits a goal to get to a net zero emissions no later than 2050. Of course, it's going to take a lot of different changes across the energy sphere. And a new report, a new study led by Princeton University researchers is breaking down the best way for some of those uh, changes to be implemented, particularly when it comes to delivering on that goal to see net zero emissions by 2050. And for more on that report, I want to bring on one of the researchers, uh, Chris Gregg, joins us right now alongside Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman, who's here to discuss uh, as well. Uh, and Chris, I mean, when we look at it, the, the report's pretty pretty uh, detailed when it comes to what can be done, but it, it seems to me like a large piece of this is going to be the electrification that we've already seen underway in terms of uh, America's vehicles. So talk to me if, if that's maybe the most important thing to stress here. Uh, what is it to you that's going to be the main factor in delivering on these on these goals? Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I think for the first decade, we've really got three priorities. The first is to double down on wind and solar generation. The second one is, as you say, really accelerate the uptake of things like electric vehicles, electric heat pumps and water heaters. Uh, but there is more to be done. And I think the other key thing we would want from the administration in, in the first period is really to invest in enabling infrastructure and technologies that are going to allow us to maintain momentum past the first term, past the first decade. So I think we need all three of those actions to be put into place. Chris, can you just address the state of the technology here? What are the uh, types of technologies we need to do this that are mostly at hand? And where do we need some uh, major breakthroughs? Yeah, so, so I think uh, we tried to focus on technologies that didn't really rely on a breakthrough. Um, so technologies that we know are technically feasible, but perhaps not quite on the commercial uh, curve yet. So things like wind and solar are there, right? So we just simply need to double down our investment. Things like carbon capture and storage and some hydrogen production technologies and say advanced nuclear, these are things which we know work, but which we have to invest in to mature those technologies ready for commercial deployment. What's interesting too is, I mean, we had a new note out from Morgan Stanley highlighting the fact that a lot of these companies are gonna be enjoying a golden age of growth uh, in the clean tech space when it comes to uh, these policy proposals. And you already mentioned about EV cars. Those are hot regardless, uh, even before we saw the administration uh, coming into power now. Uh, but when it comes to the cost of all this, you guys highlight the fact that it's not necessarily going to cost anything more than the 4 to 6% of GDP that we've traditionally spent on energy. So explain to me how that can be. Yeah, so essentially what we're seeing is a transition to a more capital-intensive energy economy. So we are investing capital, but in the long run, we're saving a substantial amount on operating costs and fossil fuels. So, so whilst there is a lot of capital to mobilise quickly, the overall services cost of energy shouldn't change a lot uh, across multiple pathways. So that's really encouraging that we can afford to do this. Uh, we've just got to we've just got to bite in and, and mobilise the capital. Chris, can private industry do this more or less alone, or is this going to require some major push from government, uh, which, of course, is where it gets politically difficult? Yeah, no, this is critical. Um, we really need the private sector to, to drive this, but it, but it simply will need some support from, from the government. Uh, I think uh, we only need really strong public-private partnerships, I would call them, uh, to, to really get started. And I think over time then the commercial models will mature and, and the private sector can lead the way and carry it through to the end. Your report um, looked at jobs. Uh, and if, if I read it right, uh, I mean, it's complicated and there are a lot of changes over a period of decades, but there would be some job losses in carbon energy industries in the short term in uh, states here in the United States, like Louisiana and West Virginia, obviously dependent on oil and coal, for example. Uh, and then um, more jobs uh, in the future in uh, new uh, green energy fields. So um, if you're a politician, how do you how do you sell this? Because any job loss in the short term is one, just one of those things that gets in the way of uh, getting anything done. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right again. This is one of the critical challenges uh, to manage through this transition. I think first up, we need to really uh, be sensitive to those regions which are likely to see some job lo losses. Uh, and, and we've got to try and shape the opportunities so that those same regions will be beneficiaries in the long run. So I think there is an opportunity here for what we might call a just transition and it will involve um, careful and sensitive uh, management of the transition. But overall, this is, this is a jobs growth story, that, that's for sure. So Chris, as somebody who has kind of the big picture on what it's gonna take here, what's your level of optimism that we're actually gonna get this problem under control? So I think the first 10 years is gonna be critical um, and, and, and therefore the first term of government. Um, I, look, I think the biggest challenge we face is the broad scale public commitment to this. Um, by public, I mean the social commitment. This is something that Americans have to want and have to buy into, uh, both in the way they consume energy and the sort of purchases they make. But there's going to be a lot of changes going on. Uh, and so how we accept the visual amenity of wind farms and, and, and new transmission lines and new pipelines, et cetera, um, you know, it, it really does come down to social licence, I think. And if we can do that, which is going to require political coalitions of support, then I'm optimistic. Um, but we really um, all have to, we have to have hands, all hands on deck, basically. Yeah, and interesting to see a lot of these energy companies among those who had also joined the call for net zero emissions by 2050 as well. So clearly they're going to have a part to play in all this too. Uh, Chris Gregg, uh, Princeton University researcher, Alongside Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman, appreciate the conversation here. Thanks again for joining us.